What's up everybody? Crab Farms here and welcome back to another video. Today we are on UMRV or Upper Mississippi River Valley. A uh, map that just came out about a week or so ago. Uh, now I've been playing on this save game for quite a while. This isn't a whole fresh start to a save game kind of deal uh, like we normally do. Uh, this is actually the second year uh, on this map. And as you can see, we are currently on July 1st. Uh, and we have some wheat that is ready to harvest. And we're going to get into that. But first, we're going to go ahead and do kind of a walkthrough of the machinery and the land that we own and kind of what's going on guys a look at it and then we'll see kind of where we're at for time once we get done walking through everything and maybe we will get uh, get into combining some of our wheat so to start off with we have our Thunder Creek uh, FST 990 this is the def version so we have diesel and exhaust fluid in it walk over here I've got three pallets of def I do have the def um, refilled point as well but um, I do also have these three def jugs or def totes they are all full here we have our snowblower it is a Fronavost um, I think is how you say that um, we got that kind of sitting over there in the corner just kind of waiting for the end of the year. Uh, we've got our Chevy Duramax, our Cat Eye Duramax, I should say. And there goes autosave. Uh, got that sitting beside the shop. In our shop, we have the Mac, uh, what is this? RS700L grain truck. We have our k 2388 uh, combine. John Deere 8960 and our John Deere 4960. And then over in our Quonset, we have the New Holland L190 uh, skid steer with the pallet forks, the Wilmar Super 800 spreader, the Best Way 1200 sprayer. Um, just picked this up this spring, <coughs> the Demco 550 uh, grain cart, so we're going to be putting that to use um, this harvest. Um, it'll be kind of exciting to have a grain cart around the farm. Uh, we've got the Case 3050 uh, grain head. We have our KSIH 4418 corn header. Uh, corn and sunflower harvest ran a little late last year, and we didn't get around to cleaning this up. So we will be cleaning that up this season before we start corn. And then here we have our pup trailer for our Mac grain truck. Uh, and if we pop on over here into this building, we have the Sunflower 6631 uh, disc. We just picked this up last fall and uh, ran really good. The John Deere 2410 chisel plow. Uh, we've had that for a couple years now and uh, it's been great. We have our Kinsey 3600 center fill with uh, liquid fertilizer added to it. Um, had this for a couple years as well. Um, and then lastly, we have the Case IH 500T drill uh, with liquid fertilizer application added to that as well. And then here we have our 24 foot PJ gooseneck trailer. Uh, you guys will see why we have this here in just a moment because uh, really it's only around for one reason. 
then we have the Mandaco uh, Land Roller. This is the uh, L6050. So then here is the reason for our gooseneck trailer. Uh, we have 10 totes of liquid fertilizer, 10 totes of seed. We have five totes of solid fertilizer, uh, five pallets of mineral feed. We have 10 totes uh, lime, and then we have 10 totes of uh, herbicide sitting over here. And then we obviously have our pressure washer beside our shop. Uh, so that is all that we have over at this farm. I'm going to make sure that my game volume settings are not cranked. I don't remember if I adjusted them at all. Nope, no, that was the right one. Um, okay. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and uh, run on over to our other farm here quick. So this is our cow farm, uh, got our pressure washer over here, we'll walk on into this shed first. We have our Vermeer TD190 Tether, our Vermeer VR1224 V-Rate, the Kloss Roland what is this, 66 uh, round baler, the Kuhn Knight uh, mixer wagon, the BPX 9010 uh, bale processor. That's all that we got in this part of the shed. We'll go through this other walk through door over here to get in here. <coughs> in here, we've got our Haybuster uh, H1130 grinder, and then we have the New Holland FP230 uh, chopper with the four row head on it. And over here we have two uh, Meyer RT216 uh, chopper wagons. We got those just chilling over here. And then we've got our John Deere 2280 diesel with the uh, 300 twin knife uh, conditioner head on it. And then we have a John Deere 4430 and a 4440. Uh, those are our two workhorses for this yard. And then we have the MDS grapple bucket and then the in-game uh, bale spike sitting there. And in this shed, we have the Sooner livestock trailer. And then I don't normally use these trailers, but uh, this is the Lizard small flatbed auto load trailer. Um, I don't normally use them, but on this save game I am. Um, I did already do a cutting, um, as you can see if we pop on up here. So we have fields 31 and 30 here. Both of these are grass fields. Uh, I cut field 31 here and uh, just baled it directly uh, and turned it into grass. And then field 30 over there I did TED and uh, used it for hay. Um, we have quite a few bales. These are all of our grass bales. And then over here is all of our hay bales. Um, I got that stuff stacked there. And then when we combine our wheat, we will be dropping the straw and um, 
baling it, and then all of the straw bales are going to get stacked over here um, along that fence. And then I do have cows purchased. I have 50 of them at the moment, and I did spend quite a good bit of money. I bought TMR, silage, hay, and grass along with straw and fed them quite a lot of all of that um, just to get them going so that way I could start establishing a herd um, even though I hadn't made any food for them so I just spent a good deal of money on food and got them fed um, they are almost two years old now. Uh, they are 100% healthy and 100% productive. And uh, they are almost halfway into uh, reproducing. So the way that I plan to be running it, um, we're going to keep kind of, we're kind of going to split up our cows. Um... Excuse me. We're going to keep all of our mature cows over here. And then after they calve, we're going to haul the calves over to our other yard and keep those uh, at our main yard. So then when we feed, we'll just run back and forth. Um, and then I did put a refill silo over here as well. Now we'll run through our fields here quick. Um, so we've got field 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, and 35. Uh, and then 38, 39, 43, and 46. If we pop over here. So we have wheat in 33 and 34. Uh, corn in 29, 32, 35, 43, and 46. Um, we're going to be chopping fields 32 and 35 for sure. Uh, and we'll kind of see where we're at uh, for an amount of silage to determine if we're going to chop any of these other fields um, as well. But field 29, we are for sure going to be combining. And any of our corn that we combine will get brought back to the main farm and dumped into our corn dryer. And we'll let it dry. And then 38 and 39 are soybeans. Um, and I am using precision farming. So we will be running with that a lot. Um, it's showing red down here on 38 for our um, nitrogen level. But... I tried applying more fertilizer, and it says that there is enough fertilizer for soybeans. So we're going to roll with it for now and just kind of see what happens. Um, but other than that, all of our fields except for our hay fields are fully uh, fertilized in terms of nitrogen. Um, these I'll worry about in the spring. And then our pH levels are all perfect all the way around. And, uh, yeah, so oh, I should have reset uh, my yield maps on those. Go ahead and, uh, well, we'll do that this winter. We'll go through and reset everything. Um, for the most part, we had pretty standard seeding rates, uh, mostly low to standard, but there were some areas where we had a high seed rate. And uh, that's mainly in uh, these silty clay areas. Um, and then I do also have a work plan set up, um, kind of showing me or letting me keep track of um, what we got going on. And we actually need to go through it and. Change these to done for um, all of these fields. 
because I did go through and spray everything. So we are completely done with all of that for the year. Um, and the biggest reason that I downloaded this was A, not only to keep track of what I have going on on the farm, but also to... Um, oh, I guess I never changed it under this one. Um, okay, and then... Do, 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 do. soybeans okay so I got everything set um, but the other reason that I have this is because I downloaded the crop rotation planner mod um, and with precision farming this helps boost uh, your uh, fields and your yields stuff like that so then I can go in here and okay my you know if I want to stick with uh, wheat corn soybeans sunflowers oats stuff like that I can use this I can go in and uh, go to the work plan and plan out next year's crops so um, just kind of a little added realism I guess just another thing to kind of enhance the gameplay and uh, kind of try to make things as realistic as I can. also going to come out. Ugh. Okay, we're just going to leave that run because we're going to need that here in a minute anyways. So to start off with, we're going to pull this guy out. Uh, actually just go sit Otherwise, it can kind of sit outside. Actually, I had it sitting outside, but um, with it not having a door or windows, uh, it we had some rain come through, so we needed to get it under cover. All right, we'll go ahead and hop on into 4960 here. We'll get this guy pulled out. Pull out that spreader and sprayer real quick. And we'll get this thing hooked up to the grain cart and get her uh, good and ready to go. Ooh, way too much. Okay, come out here and get her hooked up. I gotta hook the hoses up on this if I remember correctly. Side of the shed. Get her up right there. And we'll pull that spreader out quick. Throw it over here on the other side. 
other side of the shed. And, uh, we'll be good to get our grain cart and pup trailer and grain head out. Father, PTO not actually using the spreader. Just getting it out of our way. There, and then we'll get our green card out. And this guy's ready to roll. There we go. Perfect. Right on the money. Okay, PTO. PTO and our hoses hooked up. And we'll go ahead and get the tarp opened up as well. Perfect. It's actually a uh, quite nice setup. Okay, so get that guy. That guy is ready to roll. We'll get in here. Get this truck fired up. Start this combine and let that warm up because we have uh, started all winter long, so we haven't started since last fall. We are good built up on air pressure, so. Just check here. So for our wheat, so our dry corn is best to sell in June. The wheat we can sell in December is when it's going to be the most profitable. Um, it's actually more profitable right now than what its highest will be if we were to take it into town and go dump it in one elevator in town and have a train come pick it up and haul it off to Minneapolis. Uh, we would get a good deal of money for it. That's actually what I've been doing is just selling everything to the train. This time rolls around, we are going to do one pass around the fields with the combine, and, uh, just to kind of get everything opened up. Uh, so that way we have plenty of room to maneuver around with our chopper boxes. Everything like that. We're going to take this guy.
tried getting this header in to get it kind of fixed up, cleaned up, and uh, have everything gone through, but they were not going to be able to get it in until the end of June, and uh, they said it would take a few weeks uh, to a month to get her done, and uh, we just did not have that kind of time. Harvest was going to be coming, so uh, we scheduled it for this winter. So after we are done with our soybeans, we're going to go ahead and haul it on into town and uh, get it fixed up. set the combine up on course play. That way our uh, baler can follow the track. Crosswalk activated. Perfect. Okay, let's get this guy opened up here. So we're going to set this down to 8 meters. And we're going to do try and do 3 headlands, 5% overlap, and we'll just let it decide its own uh, fate on what direction it runs it in. Looks like we're going to be running here at an angle, which is just fine with me. We're going to go ahead and save this under crane head. And this is going to be F34. Ten four. I'm on it. This is going to be a very bountiful wheat harvest. This case is flat. I'll get it. Considering he is already almost two percent full, just barely. So, looks like we are going to have a pretty crazy amount of wheat to harvest, which is going to be perfectly fine with me. I'm not going to go grab the baler or nothing until after we are done combining um, because I don't need things getting in the way of one another. Uh, like I know that it will if I start the baler on it right now or like here momentarily. Um, yeah, that, that would not end so well. So we are going to leave that until the very end. So after we finish harvesting this field, then we'll bring it over and uh, probably have it uh, do the headlands and then we'll go through, well, we'll follow the baler around uh, picking up bales right behind it uh, or the headlands and then once he gets going on his up down rows then We'll be able to just uh, let him go, but for those headland passes, we definitely want to uh, kind of follow him around and get him cleaned up so that way our baler isn't 
That way course play is not running our baler into stuff all the time. Breaker 1-9. I just threw a level 1 warning on this combine monitor. I'm still this enough. Be quite a good wheat harvest. Let's go ahead and take a look at what our yield map is looking like so far. Uh, shoot. I should have. Okay, we're going to reset that. Okay, that did not reset. Breaker, breaker, I just threw a level 2 warning on the paddle tail oh, come back. It's almost full here already. I thought uh, resetting that would kind of reset our uh, yield values, but I guess not. Concerned with getting every last little bit like that. Thanks, Holler, I'm good. I think that's going to kind of do it for today's video. Uh, I'm going to let him get kind of rolling on this field here. And uh, in the next video, we'll kind of keep on rolling through wheat harvest and uh, kind of see what we can get accomplished and see what kind of amount of wheat we end up getting off of these two fields. I have a feeling, judging by the fact that he is already 20% full and has barely gone down the field from me, I think we are going to have quite a bit of wheat laying around this winter to sell. But uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and call it a video. And uh, like I said, get that stuff done uh, before our next video. <coughs> but uh, anyways, guys, thank you for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to hit that thumbs up button if you are new to the channel. And... Uh, have not already done so make sure you subscribe to uh, keep up on any future videos uh, we're gonna be kinda doing UMRV for a little bit here uh, as like the main series up until uh, the new version of Edgewater Saskatchewan comes out and then once that comes out then we'll be kinda flip-flopping back and forth between this series and that one or else just sticking to Edgewater one of the two uh, so we will kind of see what happens but anyways guys we will see y'all in the next video 